Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. In this video, you learn all the personality traits and how you can spot them through a person's body language. Now, the first is introverted. When a person is more introverted or is using their introverted cognitive functions, you can see that they often visibly tower up. They look at you, their face is tilted upwards and they look more down. On top of that, you might notice more lower eyelid activation. And so you can notice that a person, for example, is looking downwards like this. In that sense, you can see that the person's attention is focused not on the environment, but on their own inner world. On top of that, you can notice that introverts tend to have a stop and start style of talking. They are more slow paced when they talk and they can often stop and suddenly start again when they are engaged in a conversation. Extroverts tend to engage in a specific particular bow, often slowly leaning their forehead forward and their, uh, their face for downwards, right? What you see is they make a bowing gesture, signifying that they are paying attention to you, that they are engaged with the conversation. And on top of that, you'll notice a lot of upper eyelid activation and a lot of facial muscles in the forehead start to light up too. And what that means is this person is engaged and curious and in with what is happening around them, with the environment. And on top of that, you'll probably notice more environmental scanning on top of that, right? More engaged with what is, who are the people here? What's happening around me? Is everything, you know, what are the different things that are going on right now, right? These things are all interesting. On top of that, what you'll notice is extroverts tend to talk in a quicker pace. They tend to talk faster. And that's one way to say that extroverts in general take more initiative, are more fast-paced, and approach things with less error sensitivity. They're less afraid of their own speech and saying something that's incorrect. They learn as they go, right? The intuitive style can be noticed in the style of, for example, having relaxed muscles around the eyelids and the forehead. So even if they show activation of the muscles around here, at the same time, they seem a bit more inattentive. And so, they look around them, but at the same time, it looks like they're not fixating on any specific point. It's a daydreamy expression. It's a fantasizing imaginativity. It's an open-mindedness because they look like they are more open-minded to information than sensing types. Sensing types tense up their muscles around here and here and here a little bit more when they are listening to you, showing that they are paying more close attention to specific wordings that you're using or specific parts of what's happening around them. They look like they're focusing in on specific aspects of the environment or that they are paying attention to what is happening in a more skeptical way, right? They seem more skeptical. Feeling functions are most noticed by visible warmth and relaxation around the cheeks and upper lips and the chin and the jaw. So if you notice that a person has a very relaxed smile or a very natural or very authentic smile, or if you notice that there's a lot of warmth, natural warmth come leaking into their face, the more the better, the more the stronger the quality of the signal, that's a sign that they are a feeling type and so contrastingly the thinking type tends to have more tense activation of these muscles. You'll notice that they keep a more cool expression. Their jaw is usually more locked and that makes them seem more critical of the things that are happening around them. It's also noticed in the sense that when they talk they articulate more and are more focused on each word and this gives a bit more of a precise but also a little bit more rigid expression. And so what you'll notice with judging and perceiving is that judging types tend to have expressions that start in the midline of their face. Their smiles and expressions start here and that gives them a more focused, more linear, more directed expression. On top of that, what you'll notice is perceiving types tend to have their expression starts in the outer parts of their face, more round. Their expressions, their smiles cover and leak out all the way out to the face. And so you'll notice that they talk with their entire face while judging types talk with specifically more this part of the face. And of course, the activation goes outwards, right, from the inside. Now, also a funny pattern is judging types tend to take photos like this, showing the right side of the face and perceiving types tend to take photos like this, showing the left side of the face. So we hide our natural part of the face. You could say that perceiving types are more likely, more inclined to be right side dominant in terms of their brain. And 
judging types are more left side dominant. And perhaps we want to hide or move to the left to indicate move blood in these areas. Who knows, you know? It's just patterns. And that's the same with all body language. It's just pattern recognition. These patterns don't necessarily have to work 100% of the time. They're just simple keys to give you some thumb rules and some ideas of what to look for. And of course, the most important thing you can do is whenever you're talking to somebody, you can say, it looks like you're doing this right now. Is that true? It looks like you're thinking more about that right now. It looks like you're paying more attention to this. Do I have that right? Do I understand that right? And so you can get a person to clarify. Yeah, no, actually I was. Yeah, that's true. No, no, I know. Actually, I wasn't. I was more like this. Okay. Oh, that's interesting, right? So it's an additional lens to understand people. It's not a replacement for regular conversations and learning. It's an additional lens to understand a person. Body language adds on to and emphasizes what a person is saying more strongly, giving emphasis and giving effect to what the person is doing. But it's not a replacement, right? And a lot of people think it's going to be this replacement. They think that, oh, if I can learn to read people's body language now, I'll understand everyone in three seconds and then I never have to talk to them, right? Wrong, right? Like the process of learning to type true body language is an interview style approach. You make collages of patterns, listening to celebrities and thinking about what they say and what they do and how it matches up. You interview people, you listen to them, you ask them questions about their personality, you notice how they act and what they do while they talk about it, right? And so it helps clarify and spot mistakes, right? It gives an additional perspective. And that's one way to help you become more accurate in understanding other people more correctly, right? Because of course, people's words can sometimes lead you astray, but so can your body language. Now, if you want to learn more about all this, I have a body language glossary available for all my patrons at patreon.com slash ericdor and I have more series and videos planned. So stay tuned for my short series where I dissect and talk about all the body language of all the personnel types and of the different personality traits and cognitive functions. Enjoy and have fun learning about body language and personality.